<clears throat> this is the word which Adonai spoke concerning Baval, concerning the land of the Castum through Yermiehu the prophet. Declare it among the nations, proclaim it. Hoist a banner, proclaim it, and don't hide it. Say, Baval is captured. Bel is shamed. Merodach disgraced. Her image shamed, her idols disgraced. For from the north, a nation is marching against her that will desolate her land. No one will live there. Both humans and animals have fled and gone. In those days, at that time, says Adonai, the people of Israel will come together with the people of Yehuda. They will weep as they go their way, seeking Adonai, their God. They will ask the way of Zion, and turning their faces toward it, will say, Come, join yourself to Adonai by an everlasting covenant never to be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep. My shepherds made them go astray, turning them loose in the mountains. As they wandered from mountain to hill, they lost track of where their home is. Everyone finding them ate them up. Their enemy said, We are guilty, for they have sinned against Adonai resting place of justice. Yes, against Adonai, their ancestors hope. Flee from Babal, lead the land of the Castum, be like male goats leading the flock. For I will stir up and bring against Babal an alliance of great nations from the country to the north. They will array themselves against her. From there she will be captured. Their arrows are like those of death-dealing warrior. None will return in vain. The land of the Castum would be plundered. All who plunder it will get enough, says Adonai. Because you are glad, because you exult the plunder, your plunders, you plunders of my heritage, because you frisk like a calf in the grass and neigh and ne like stallions, your mother will be utterly shamed. She who bore you will be disgraced. Here she is, last among the nations, a desert, harsh and barren. Because of the anger of Adonai, no one will live there anymore. All of it will be desolate. Everyone passing Baval will whistle in shock at her plagues. Take your position surrounding Baval, all you, all you whose bows are strung. Shoot at her, spare no arrows, because she sinned against Adonai from all sides. Raise the war cry against her. Now she surrenders. Her buttresses fall. Her walls are thrown down. For this is the vengeance of Adonai. Avenge yourself on her, as she has done due to her. Cut off sower from Baval, and the reaper was sickle at harvest time. For fear of the destroying sword, everyone returns to his own land. Each one flees to his own land. Israel is a stray lamb, driven away by lions. First to devour him with Ashur's king, was Ashur's king, and the last to break his bones. Is this Nebuchadnezzar king of Baal? Therefore Adonai Svod, the God of Israel, says, I will punish the king of Baal and his land. I will punish the king of Ashur. I will bring Israel back to his pasture, to graze on the Carmel, to graze on the Carmel and the Bashan, on the hills of Ephraim and Gilead, until he has had his fill. In those days at that time, says Adonai, Israel's guilty will be sought, but there will be none. And the Yehudias, and the Yehudas sins, but they won't be found. But I will pardon the remnant I leave. Attack, says the Meritiim. Attack it, and those living in Pekad, waste them, utterly destroy them. Do as I have ordered you, says Adonai. The sound of battle is heard in the land with great destruction. How the hammer and the whole earth lies hacked apart and, scat and shattered. What an object of horror among the nations Bavel has become. I set a trap, it caught you. Bavel, before you knew it, you were, dis you were discovered and seized because you challenged Adonai. Adonai has opened his store of arms and brought out the weapons of his wrath, for Adonai Elohim is about, has work to do in the land of the Castum. Attack her from every direction, open her stores of grain, pile up like heaps of grain, destroy her completely, leaving nothing, kill all her bulls, let them go down to be slaughtered, woe to them for their day has come, the time of them to be punished. Hear the sound of the fugitives, of those escaping from Baval, coming to proclaim Zion, the vengeance of Adonai our God, vengeance over his temple.
call up archers against Baval. All those bows who all those bows are strung. Besiege her and from every side. Let no one escape. Repay her for her deeds, as she has done due to her. For she insulted Adnai, the Holy One of Israel. This is why her young men will fall in her open places. Why all her warriors will be silenced on that day, says Adnai. I am against you, arrogant nation, says Adonai Elohi Svaot. For your day has come. Time for you to be punished. The arrogant nation will stumble and fall, and no one will lift him up again. I will set his cities on fire, and it will devour I will devour and it will devour everything around him. Thus says Adonai Svaot. The people of Israel are oppressed, and so are the people of Yehuda. Those who took them captive hold them fast. They refuse to let them go, but their Redeemer is strong. Adonai Svaot is his name. He will thoroughly plead their cause so that he can give rest to the land, but unrest to those who live in Baval. Adonai says, A sword hangs over the castum and over those who live in Baval, over her leaders and over her sages. A sword hangs over the, li the lying diviners. They will become fools. A sword hangs over his, her warriors. They will be disgraced. A sword hangs over her, their horses, also over their chariots, also over the foreigners within her. They will become like women. A sword hangs over her treasures. They will be robbed. A drought hangs over, their, over her waters. They will be dried up. For this is a land of idols. They go mad over these horrors of theirs. Therefore, wild cats and jackals will live there, and ostriches will settle there. I will, it will never again be peopled. It will be uninhabited age after age, as when God overthrew Saddam, Amora, and their neighboring town, says Adnai. No one will settle there anymore. No human being will live there again. Look, a people is coming from the north. A great nation and many kings are being stirred up from the ends of the earth. They are armed with bow and spear. They are cruel without compassion. Their sound is like a roaring sea as they ride forth on horses. Their men take their battle positions against you, daughter of Baval. The king of Baval has heard news of them. His hands droop, helpless. Anguish seizes hold of him and pain like a woman in labor. It is like a lion coming up from the thicket of the yard and against the strong settlement. In an instant, I will chase him away and appoint him over and appoint over it whomever I choose, for who is like me? Who can call me to account? What shepherd can stand up to me? So hear the plan of Adnai, so he has devised against Baval, and his goals that he will accomplish against the land of the Castum, the least of the flock will drive them away. Their own pasture will be in shock at them, at the sound of Baval's capture and earthquakes, their cries heard throughout the nations. Adonai says this, against Baval and those living in Leave Kama, I will stir up a destructive wind. Against Baval, I will send foreigners to winnow her and leave her land empty. They will besiege her from every side on the day of the disaster. Let the archers draw his bows. Let him flaunt his coat of mail. Do not spare her young men. Completely destroy her whole army. In the land of the Castum, the slain will fall. Those through those thrust through by the sword in the streets, Israel and Yehuda are not left widowed of their god Adonai Svaot, but the land of the Castum is full of guilt before the Holy One of Israel. Flee from Baval, let each one save his life. Don't perish because of her guilt, for the time has come for the vengeance of Adonai. He will repay, he will repay her what she deserves. Babel was a gold cup in the hands of Adonai. It made the whole earth drunk. The nations drank her wine. This is why the nations have lost their senses. Babel was suddenly fallen. She is broken. Wail for her. Bring healing ointment for her wounds. Perhaps she can be healed. We tried to heal Babal, but she cannot be healed. So leave her alone and each of us will return to his own country for the judgment against her arises to the skies and reaches even to the clouds. Adnai has brought forth victory. Come, let us proclaim and Proclaim in Zion the work of Adonai, our God. Sharpen the arrows, fill the quivers. Adonai refuses to... Sp Adonai rouse the spirits of the kings of the Medes because he plans to destroy Baval. This is the vengeance of Adonai, vengeance over his temple. Raise a standard against the walls of Baval. Strengthen the guard, post the 
centuries. Prepare ambushes for Adonai has both planned and accomplished what he promised to do those living above all. You who live near plenty of water, so such and so rich in treasure, your end has come, your time for being cut off. Adonai's vote has sworn by himself, I will fill you with men as numerous as grasshoppers. They will raise over you a shout of triumph. He made the earth by his power, established the world by his wisdom, spread out the sky by his understanding. When he thunders, the waters in heaven roar. He raises clouds from the ends of the earth. He makes the lightning flash and the rain and brings the wind out from the storehouses. At this, everyone is proven stupid, ignorant. Every goldsmith put to shame by his idol. The figures he's cast are a fraud. There is no breath in them. There are, they are nothing, ridiculous objects. When the day of their punishment comes, they will perish. Yaakov's portion is not like these, for he is one who formed all things, including the tribe he claims as his inheritance, as his heritage. Adonai Svaot is his name. Babel, you are my war club, my war club and weapons of war. With you I shatter nations, with you I destroy kingdoms, with you I shatter horses and their riders, with you I shatter chariots and, and their drivers, with you I shatter husbands and wives, with you I shatter old and young, with you I shatter young men and virgins, with you I shatter shepherds and their flocks, with you I shatter farmers and their teams, with you I shatter governors and, de and deputies. But I will repay Baval and all the living in the land of the Castum for all the evil that they did in Zion, says Adnai, before your eyes, Yehuda. I am against you, destructive mountain, destroying all the earth, says Adnai. I will stretch out my hand against you to send you tumbling down from the crags and make you a burned out mountain. No one will make cornerstones or foundation stones from you again, but you will be desolate forever, says Adnai. Raise up a banner in the land, blow the shofar among the nations, prepare the nations for war against her, summon kingdoms against her. Era, Mini, and Ashkenaz, appoint an officer against her. Bring up horses like bristling grasshoppers. Prepare the nations against her, the king of the Medes, his governors and deputies, and all the land he controls. The earth quakes and rists. As Adnai designs against Babel are fulfilled, to make the land of Babel a ruin, with no one living there, Babal's warriors have given up fighting. They remain in their fortresses. Their courage has failed. They are now like women. Her homes are on fire. Her gates, her gate bars broken. One runner runs to meet another messenger to meet messenger to report the king of Babal that every part of the city has been taken and the fords have been occupied and the swamps thickets set on fire while the warriors are seized with panic, for here is what Adonai Svot, the God of Israel, says. The daughter of Baal is like a threshing floor at threshing time, just a little while longer, and the time for harvesting, harvesting her will come. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Baal, has devoured me, crushed me. He left me like an empty pot, like a monster. He swallowed me whole. With my delicacies, he stuffed my, his belly. Then he rinsed me out. But one, of, one who lives in Zion will say, May my flesh, may my torn flesh be avenged by Baval, and Yerushalayim will say, May my blood be avenged and cast him. Therefore, here is what Adonai says. I will plead your cause. I will take vengeance for you. I will dry up her rivers. I will make her water sources dry. Baval will come and heap of ruins, a place of jackals to live, an object of horror and hissing. No one living there. Together they roar like young lions, growl like lion cubs. When they are hot with desire, I will prepare them a drink. I will make them so drunk they will have convulsions. Sleep forever and never wake up, says Adonai. I will drag them down like lambs to be slaughtered, like rams and male goats. Shishach has been captured. The pride of the whole earth seized. Baval has become an object of horror throughout the nations. The sea has flooded Baval, overwhelmed her with her raging waves. Her cities have become desolate, parched, arid lands. A land where no one lives, nobody even passes through. I will, pu I will punish Bel and Baval and make him dis disgorge what he swallowed. The nations will no longer follow him. Baval will fall. Baval's wall will fall. Get out of her, my people. Each one of you save yourselves from Adonai's furious anger. Don't be faint-hearted. Don't be afraid of the rumors spreading abroad in the land. One year, one year, one rumor comes. The next year, another one. Rumors of violence in the land, the rulers fighting rulers. Therefore, listen. Days are coming when I will pass judgment on Baval's idols. Her whole land 
will be put to shame as all of her slain fall on home soil, then heaven and earth and all that is in them will sing for joy over Babal, for the plunderers from the north are coming to her, saying, says Adnai, just as Babal caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babal will fall, the slain of all the land. You escape the sword, go, don't stand still. Remember Adnai from afar, let Yerushalayim come into your minds. The reproaches we have heard have put us to shame. Disgrace covers our faces because foreigners have entered the sanctuaries of Adnai's house. Therefore, this, therefore, says Adnai, the days are coming when I will pass judgment on her idols and the wounded will groan throughout her land. Even if Baval scatters the heavens or reinforces her lofty stronghold, plunders will come to her from me, says Adnai. An agonized, an agonizing cry is heard, is heard from Baval. Great destruction in the land of the castle for Adnai is plundering Baval and silencing her noisy din. Her waves roar like the raging ocean. They, their clamor sound and resound. But the plunder has fallen upon her, fallen on Baval. Her warriors are captured. Their bows are broken. For Adnai is God of retribution. He will surely repay. I will intoxicate her leaders and sages, her governors and de deputies, warriors. They will sleep forever and never wake up, says the king whose name is Adnai Svaot. Thus says Adnai Svaot, the wall the wide walls of Baval will be raised to the ground. Her lofty gates will be set on fire. The peoples have, are toiling for nothing. The nation's labor goes up in flames, and everyone is exhausted. This is the word which Jeremiah the prophet gave to Syria, son of Nerea, son of Mechasiah, which he went into Baval and with Zedekiah, king of Yehuda, in the fourth year of his reign. Syria was quartermaster. Jeremiah had written on a separate scroll. All the words described this disaster that will befall Baval. Yermiah said to Syria, See to it that when you arrive in Baval, you read all the words aloud. Then say, Adnai, you have promised to destroy this, pa this place, that no one will live here, neither human nor animal, but that it will be desolate forever. When you finish reading the scroll, tie a rock to it, throw it in the middle of the Euphrates, and say, like this, Baval will sink. Never rise again, because the disaster I am bringing on you, they will grow weary up to here. These even been the words of Yermiah. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he began to rule, and he ruled for 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hematuel, the daughter of Yermiah from Libna. He did what was evil from Adonai's perspective, following the example of everything Eurochium had done. And it was because of Adonai's anger that all these things happened to Yerushalayim and Yehuda, until they had, until he had thrown them out of his presence. Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Baal. So, in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Baal, marched against Yerushalayim and his entire army. He set up camp against it and built siege towers against it on every side. The city remained under siege until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. In the ninth. In the ninth day of the fourth month, when the famine of the city was so severe that there was no food for the people in the land, they broke through into the city. All the soldiers fled and left the city by night through the gate between the walls, two walls, near the king's garden. Because the Kastim were surrounding the city, they took the route through the Arava. But the army of the Kastim went in and pursued the king and overtook Zedekiah on the plains near Yeriko. All the troops deserted him. Then they took the king and brought him to the king of Baval in Rivla, the land of Hamath, where he passed judgment on him. The king of Baval slaughtered his sons before his eyes. He also slaughtered all the leading men of Yehuda in Rivla. Then the king of Baval put out Zedekiah's eyes, brought him in chains, carried him off to Baval, and kept him in prison to the day of his death. In the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, which was also the nineteenth year of the king Nebuchadnezzar, king of Baval, Nebuchadnezzar, the commander of the guard, had also close associate with King Baval, entered Jerusalem. He burned down the house of Adnai, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every notable person's house he burned to the ground. The whole army of the Kastim, who were with him, the commander's guard, broke down all the walls of Jerusalem on every side. Nebuchadnezzar, Dan, the commander of the guard, then deported some of the poor people and remaining population of the city, the deserters who had defected the King of Baval and the rest of the common people, but Nebuchadnezzar Dan, the commander of the guard, left behind some of the poor people of the land to be vineyard workers and farmers. The Kastim smashed the bronze columns of the house of Adonai, also the trolleys, the bronze sea, and 
that were in the house of Adonai and carried their bronze to Baval. They also took away the pots, shovels, snuffers, basins, pans, and all the bronze articles they had used in worship. The commander of the guard took the cups, censers, sprinkling bowls, pots, menorahs, pans, and bowls, everything made of gold and everything made of silver. The bronze, the two columns, the one C, and the twelve bronze bowls under the bases, and all which Shlomo had made the house of Adonai was more than could be weighed. As for the columns, the height of one column was thirty-one and a half feet. It took a twenty-one foot measure line to go all around it, and the thickness was four fingers. It was hollow. It was on capital brass, eight and three quarters feet high, and with netting, pomegranates all around the capital, all of bronze. The second column was similar, also with pomegranates. There were ninety-six pomegranates on the outside, while the total number of the pomegranates was netting was one hundred. Commander of the guard took prisoner, Syria, the chief Kohen, Zephaya, the second ranking Kohen, three doorkeepers. From the city he took the officials in charge of the, of the soldiers, seven close associates to the king who had been found in the city, and the army's commander, secretary, and the charge of the military conscription, and sixty of the common people found inside the city. Nebuchadnezzar, the commander of the guard, took them and brought them to the king of Baal and Riblah. Then in Rivla, in the land of Hamath, the king of Baal had put them to death. Thus Yehuda was carried away captive out of this land. The number of the people that deported Nebuchadnezzar were as follows. In the seventh year, 3,023 persons from Yehuda. In the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, 832 persons from Yerushalayim. And in the twenty-third year of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar and the commander of the guard deported 745 persons from Yehuda. The total number comes to 4,600 persons. In the thirty seventh year of the captivity of Yochian, king of Yehuda, in the twelfth month, in the twenty-fifth day of the month, Evil, Mordach, began his reign as king of Baal. In his first year he committed, commuted the sentence of Yochian, king of Yehuda, and released him from prison. He treated him with kindness, and gave him a throne higher than those of the kings with him of Baal. So Yochian no longer had to wear prison clothes. Moreover, he was provided with food as long as he lived, and he was granted a daily allowance by the king of Baal to spend on the other needs as for as long as he lived until the day of his death.